living donor transplantation is unique in medicine because we are asking someone to take a small but definite risk to their own physical well-being for no definite personal benefit. Tonight, we are initiating an important landmark concept, the world's first center for living organ donation. If you had the opportunity to be a hero, to change somebody's life, to even save their life, wouldn't you take it? Love makes sacrifice simple. But then you start to think about who else you would donate to. Mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your friends, your co-workers. And that circle just keeps on, keeps on getting a little bit bigger. After you donate, you realize there is no circle. That that willingness is boundless. Because you really are giving the gift of life. For Joanne, it's a story of her health, her quality of life, indeed of her very survival. For Brendan, it's a story of an extraordinary gift of love, a gift of life by an exceptional human being. It is the living organ donors who are the heroes of this story. Brendan's selfless gift of love and the gift of my anonymous direct kidney donor has been hugely transformational. It has given me so much hope and excitement for another 30 years, if not more, as a stronger, healthier version of myself. But Brendan's gift also taught me that you have to give more in life than you take. UHN is a center that has committed itself to organ donation and transplantation as a priority program. We see the work that we're doing here not just benefiting our patients, but translatable to Canada and to the rest of the world. We are the largest transplant program in North America, but we also have a commitment to innovation. This isn't simply about getting transplants done, it's about patients getting one transplant for life. So we have put in medical expertise and surgical expertise to continue to innovate how we give transplant care, how we allocate organs to get the best match possible so the organ lasts as long as possible. Tonight we're here primarily to celebrate Joanne and Brendan's donation and transplantation journey and their one year anniversary of their successful donation and transplant. But what we're also here to do is acknowledge that even though transplant is a life-saving therapy that is cost-effective and adds 10 to 30 years of life for everyone who receives it, not everyone who needs it can get this chance. Joanne and Brendan have been visionary in wanting to improve the opportunity for all patients, not just themselves. For that, we're very, very grateful. And we're using this opportunity to improve the messaging about living organ donation so that every patient who needs it can have the same happy ending that Joanne and Brendan have had. Happy ending indeed. Hi everyone, as you can see from the video, my name is Joanne Carney and thanks so much for joining us this afternoon at our celebration event as part of Living Organ Donation Week 2020. As you heard my dad say in that video, it's the living organ donors who are the true heroes of these stories. And from my perspective, three and a half years later, that's absolutely still the case. After Brendan and I went through our transplant journey, we knew how lucky and blessed we were, and we really wanted to help others in organ failure have their chance at a happy ending. And we were so inspired by the other heroes in transplant, the entire UHN transplant team, and their vision to improve access to living organ donation so they could very simply save more lives, that together with the team and other founding supporters, we helped launch the Center for Living Organ Donation in 2018. And we are so proud of the work the center continues to do in raising awareness, providing support, and promoting research that's gonna offer hope to thousands of Canadians who are waiting for a liver or a kidney transplant. But most importantly, the work they're doing in caring for those who wanna be part of the future, the living organ donors. Joe? Thanks, uh, I'm Dr. Joseph Kim. Thanks, Joanne. I'm the director of the Kidney Transplant Program here at UHN. I'm also the president of the Canadian Society of Transplantation. 
uh, and uh, a proud member of the governance committee for the Center for Living Organ Donation. Uh, the goal of Living Donation 2020 is to bring together Canadian living donor transplant community, really to celebrate living donors and their recipients, as well as raise awareness for the vital role played by living organ donation in improving access to transplantation, but also uh, the outcomes of transplantation as well. It has been a really busy week so far, filled with some excellent speakers and discussions. Joe, I know you're on service right now, but hopefully you've had a chance to tune in between calls mm -hmm. to see some of the action. The theme this, this week has really been about improving access and equity to living donor transplantation, and it's been great to see UHN and indeed Canada's global leadership on stage, especially this morning when conversation with Andre Picard from the Globe and Mail, and it was, it was a fascinating conversation. Every time I leave, I leave a conversation with transplant leaders, I'm so excited about what the future holds. Of course, for me as a patient, but more importantly for the whole field of transplant medicine. Look how far we've come in 50 years. Can, we can't even imagine what another 50 years bring. And, and I really, the ending of that conversation this morning left on such an exciting note and showcase that whatever, wherever we're gonna be in 50 years, UHN and Canada is gonna be leading that innovation and leading where we, where we get. Um, we've also had some really real and emotional conversations. Joe, your conversation earlier this afternoon with your physician colleagues who became transplant recipients was so moving. Um, I loved how your colleague Rob referred to his career in transplant as the happiness business. And then he found himself on the other side um, and it changed his life. And it's something that uh, you certainly hear across the board. It was an unexpected gift that we got through Brendan and my, and my experience. It was the most extraordinary experience of Brendan's life. And we had no idea that he was going to be changed from it, not just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I really did enjoy those interviews. Thanks, Joanne. And, and I would say uh, my physician colleagues are truly inspiring. And I think as care providers, it's really important for us to truly deeply understand the experience of patients as well as their families. And really, there's no more profound way to do that than actually to be a patient and actually and or be a family member of a patient. And of course, that's not something that you wish on anyone. But at the same time, when you go through that, it really sort of uh, creates this uh, sort of a, a sense of empathy that one cannot have otherwise, and or at least difficult to achieve. And I think the ordeal that Rob and Margaret went through was really probably hit close to home for many who are listening right now. Uh, and uh, I was also amazed at the at the heroism and courage of my colleagues who decided to donate. I, I think that's an amazing mm -hmm. thing. It's sort of putting your money where your mouth is in some ways. And it was really a truly inspiring example. Is that a is that a frequent conversation amongst your transplant colleagues? Because you every day you're dealing with people who need a, who need a kidney or are going to give one. How often does that yeah. come up? Yeah, it's a great yeah, it's a great point. Actually, you know what? It doesn't come up as much as you'd think. Partly because we're just busy doing the work and we want to serve our patients well. But I'm sure I certainly personally have also had thoughts about this and 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 what uh, what I'd like to do in the future. You know, we have young, you know, many of us are in, in families with young children and other things. So we're always thinking about, you know, uh, the, the importance of living donation, uh, of course, if ever comes to it for your family. But eventually, you know, if, if you can give that gift of life, I think pretty much everyone has thought that. And I certainly have. And I'd say Bob Richardson's, uh, my interview with Bob Richardson, my nephrology colleague, really, really sort of uh, re reinvigorated, at least for me, certainly, the, the thoughts of that. So, yes, absolutely. You, I think I you think saw so. that happening in real time in, in your response. Yeah. It was, I, I thought, I wonder if that's what's going through Dr. Kim's mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. And he's, uh, it was great. And I must say, um, uh, it really does sort of, uh, it was really inspiring. It was very, very touching as well. Um, maybe what I'll do is uh, just to sort of give everyone an overview of the program for this afternoon. It's, it's fairly sweet and short. Uh, it's going to give you a glimpse of the exceptional stories that are coming out of our program, as well as not just the UHN, but programs across the country. Uh, and it's really our chance to say thank you. I, mean, I think uh, thank yous are, are plenty to go around uh, when it comes to this stuff, but I don't think it's never enough, really. And just the, sort of the sheer appreciation and gratitude of everyone involved, the amazing donors and our dedicated teams and our recipients, caregivers, as well as family and friends. Uh, to do all this, we've got uh, video messages from the UHN leadership, we've got donors and recipients and a number of other individuals. Uh, and uh, our first video actually is a, bit, a very important one because it highlights a very important milestone in our program. And it's the 20th anniversary of the Living Liver Donation Program, uh, and uh, which just recently completed a little over 800 transplants uh, in its uh, relatively short 
life. I mean, 20 years, is, it's, although it's two decades, transplantation goes several decades back. So, and a big thank you to doctors Nazia Selzner and Mark Cottrell, who are respectively the medical and surgical directors of that program. Really outstanding. And I must say, it's one of our uh, flagship programs in the uh, in, in the Edgemary in, in Transplant Center. It's considered certainly one of the best in North America, if not the world. And so, uh, uh, kudos to my my uh, liver transplant team, uh, colleagues and team members. Um, speaking of Dr. Cottrell, actually, he and another colleague, not only are they talented transplant uh, physicians and surgeons, they also have musical talent as well. And they're members of actually a, a band called the Marginal Donors, a fantastic name. Uh, and we're thrilled to have them playing a few songs for us as well this afternoon. So with that, let's go on to our first set of videos and hear a song from the Marginal Donors as well as uh, uh, enjoy the videos that sort of preceded. And then we'll be back to talk a little bit more about Living Donation Week 2020. I first want to extend my congratulations on the 20 year celebration of the live donor program. When the liver team came together in 2000 to investigate the possibility of performing live liver transplantation, it was only through thoughtful consultation bringing together a strong multidisciplinary team consisting of outstanding surgeons, physicians, nurses, ethicists and social workers. Through hard work and with a highly talented and dedicated team, the program was started and is now recognized as the best and largest program in the Western world. The true heroes, of course, are the donors, an amazing group of individuals who put their lives on the line to save husbands, wives, children, parents, friends, and even perfect strangers. It has been a great joy and work of love to be part of this amazing program and Toronto will always be the world leaders and most importantly, save many lives. I was inspired to donate after I read about the overwhelming need for donors and I thought I could make a difference to a family who did not have someone who could donate. When I started the testing process, my wife and I had no idea that we were about to head down a road of the most incredible experience of our lives. The Toronto General Hospital staff took extreme care of me. They made sure that I was capable of donating and that I was making the right decision for me. I was amazed at how quickly I recovered after the surgery. It's been 15 years and I've never had an issue. If anything, I have learned how much of a difference one person can make. Being a living donor is easily the best decision I've ever made. I would do it again. It fills me with tremendous joy when I think about that child out there and, and having that second chance with their family. I encourage everyone to consider becoming a living donor because you have it within you to save the life of someone else. And every three days in Ontario, a person dies because they don't get the life-saving organ that they need. And so you might make that life or death difference for someone out there. 40 years ago, my wife Jan was diagnosed with polycystic kidney and liver disease. 22 years ago, she had her first liver transplant at TGH. 12 years ago, she had her second liver transplant at Toronto General. And she will need a kidney coming soon. I can't say enough about the transplant department at TGH. They were wonderful through the whole process and obviously amazing surgeons to give my wife two new chances, if not three, at a longer life. Special thanks to Dr. Levy, Dr. Lilly, Dr. Greg, Dr. Grant, and nurse practitioner Brenda McQuarrie, as well as all the nurses and all the staff on, in the transplant unit. Thank you and God bless all of you. J'ai reçu ma greffe de foie en décembre 2019. Ma sœur Jacinthe était ma donneuse vivante. Je pense souvent à ce que ma vie serait sans son courage et sa générosité. Elle m'a donné une deuxième chance à la vie. Les donneurs vivants méritent toutes les accolades au monde. Merci aux donneurs vivants qui nous donnent tous de l'espoir. 
We would like to give an amazing, amazing giant thank you to all of the transplant staff at Toronto General Hospital and Sick Kids that helped us in our miracles, especially Dr. Cottrell, Dr. Ganekar, and Julie Sissel. We can't thank you enough and we love you so much. And we really hope that everybody has a great week. Kiss. You are a father and daughter team. I uh, really amazing with an inspirational story. We need to know more. Well, 2011, and I remember I was standing in your living room, and you said, uh, "Well, babes, I have kidney disease," and uh, I knew enough. I guess I somehow knew a little bit to know that a transplant was was the way to go, or something was set off in me. Uh, and I'll never forget that moment because it was just, I just, I'm doing this. My donated kidney is courtesy of my daughter, Bethany. I thank her not only for the kidney, but for being the researcher and cheerleader that convinced me to proceed. You'd be quite surprised um, at how smooth um, and rewarding the process can be. Should I go for it? Okay. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, 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 boom. He needs a kidney and I have two. When you receive a kidney transplant, there are so many people to thank. First, in my case, is my daughter and donor, Bethany. Second, my entire extended family and friends. Third, my gratitude to an army of healthcare providers and volunteers dedicated to helping patients with kidney disease. My sister was diagnosed with kidney disease in uh, 2017. She was on dialysis for roughly two years. So a few of us among the family and friends and cousins decided to uh, get screened for uh, donation. And after it was determined that I was healthy enough to give, the surgery was scheduled in uh, December 2019. Surgery went off without a hitch. Uh, within a week, the doctors decided to take my sister off dialysis. And uh, within two months, I was back at work, back in the office. But none of this could have been possible with that. The talented nurses, doctors, and surgeons, their kindness, compassion, generosity of spirit. I'd just like to take a moment to thank them. My heroes at the Ottawa Hospital. Um, I know there's always a lot of people behind the scenes. Um, thank you to them as well. Uh, but these were the people I knew personally. Thank you guys for everything you did for me and my sister, for our family. Thanks. It's my pleasure to work closely with, with many of the staff at University Health Network, to name but a few, Dr. Humo, Dr. Catherine Tinkham, Dr. Joseph Kim, Dr. Cottrell, Dr. Lilly, as well as Joanne Z. One of the other things though that is important uh, to recognize is uh, the stories that we hear from both living donations and transplant recipients. I have been working in this uh, area for many, many years and it never fails to, to just leave me breathless uh, when I hear of some of the, the wonderful stories that come forward from patients and their families. I think it sends a, a huge message to the community uh, about the opportunities that, that is out there to be able to you know, not only enhance but save lives through organ donation and transplantation. I know here at Trillium Gift of Life Network our mission is very clear in supporting organ donation and transplantation and we will continue to support the programs in the very best way that we can. Um, and uh, I'd like to just say in closing, thank you very much for the opportunity and I wish you a good week. Alone in a paradise
such a cause You would think you don't get lost Like a coin that won't get tossed Doesn't mean that much to me, to mean that much to you. I've been first and last. Look at how the time goes past. Now I'm all alone at times. Wow, Joe, you have some amazingly talented colleagues and not just in transplant medicine. They're fantastic. Have you seen them live before? I have, I have. They're actually quite a quite an inspirational group. They're really amazing at what they do. So it's nice to see the, their, the way they sort of express their talents outside of the operating room and in, in, the, in the clinics. Absolutely. Now I had heard they had retired. So it was great to see them coming out of uh, retirement for our, our living donation celebration. We're very honored. Um, to our viewers out there who want to comment or give a big shout out to the marginal donors, um, or we can read out messages of gratitude and thanks, please head to slido.com and enter the code LIVINGTX20. We would really love to hear your thoughts. And in the, in the videos that played before the marginal donors, it was really awesome to see some familiar faces who we met last year at the donor recognition event where we were able to be in person. And it was really, really fantastic because the room is just packed with with the, you, the transplant team, with donors and their loved ones and recipients. And it really gave a sense of just how big the program is and the impact the program is having every day. So for those of you who weren't there last year, we're gonna show you the highlight reel to give you a little glimpse of um, that energy in the room. I think the world of transplant is actually something really special. A successful transplant just doesn't give a patient their old life back. It actually gives them a better life, free of the many restrictions that chronic illness placed on them before. If one out of every 10,000 Ontarians were able to be a living donor, we could clear the kidney and liver wait list tomorrow. And when you think of it like that, it makes it crystal clear how important it is to spread awareness, educate people, open doors, and simply allow people to walk right through them. I'm still amazed at this. It's just a, such an incredible thing to see. The recipients really transform their lives and they recover so quickly most of the time and they're back home, they're back doing the things that they love. My daughter Nyla was born with biliary atresia, which is a deadly liver disease. Last fall it became clear that Nyla would need a life-saving liver transplant. I was devastated. May 23rd, 2019 will always be the most memorable day of my life. That was the day she got a second chance at life because someone put their life on the line for her. I am truly amazed with this little human's resilience, strength, positivity, and impact. I can only imagine what she's going to go on to do in her long life, and knowing that I played a small part in all the wonderful things that she will accomplish brings me the greatest joy that I have ever felt. 
donors are, are everyone. They're moms, they're daughters, they're sons, they're uncles, they're everybody. Everyone can be a donor. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's really cool. The sharing of information, the sharing of stories, um, the camaraderie amongst all the donors and the recipients has just been amazing. Everybody needs to be brave and everybody needs to try and don't wait until you're stuck in that predicament of being in a really hard circumstance and in a really hard situation. So talk to your loved ones about it today, go and get tested. It's the very best thing you'll ever do and you'll never regret it. Your donation, your choice, has radically transformed the lives, not only of the recipient, but the broader families of so many recipients. So a sincere thank you to each and every one of you. As living organ donors, we're too often called heroes, but small sacrifices for those you love, they're as easy as breathing. So Joe, in two videos now, we've heard from your colleague, your colleague, Dr. Catherine Tinkham, a stat that always blows me away. If one in every 10,000 Ontarians were able to become a living donor, we would clear the kidney and liver transplant wait list tomorrow. Um, I often think about this. I, I, I often, you know, wonder, can we do it? And I think it's a fantastic rallying cry or call to action for the Center for Living Organ Donation to try to tackle over, over the coming we won't say tomorrow, but you know, over the coming of the next couple of years. Um, but recently, with the pandemic, we did see a pause in the in the living donor transplant program. Can you talk a little bit about that? Did that impact our ability to meet some of these goals, or our ability to um, give the care that you and your team really want to give every day? Yeah, thanks, Joanne. Yeah, it, it certainly was a challenge for the entire healthcare system, for sure, um, but uh, certainly for transplant as well, and. A big part of I think the challenge is, you know, we, we become very close uh, to our donors and our, and our recipient candidates are going through the process. And then to have to tell them that unfortunately we have to put things on pause because of the uh, uncertainty around the pandemic and the direction it was going was very, very difficult. And uh, and everyone was very understanding, of course, but at the same time, it's, it's never uh, good news to say, you know, we're having to stop this and, and essentially you have to put your life on hold again until we sort of sort this out. So fortunately, uh, we're sort of we've been able to understand more about the virus and how to deal with it, how to diagnose it, how to manage it. And so as a result, we've been able to put in place safety measures at the hospital level, but also at the donation system level uh, that allows us to do transplants safely. And so we've been able to ramp up our activity again. The hospital has been fantastic, been amazing in helping support living donation again through the operating rooms, even though they currently there's a huge deluge of a need for the operating yeah, rooms right now, just for now for just for transplant, for cardiac, for cancer, for all the other sort of operative procedures. UHN, however, has been incredibly supportive of the transplant program. And so we are moving forward with living donation, both uh, for kidney and liver. So it's it's taught us a lot. And I think there's much to uh, to learn from this for the future as well. Hopefully not for a future pandemic yeah. for a very long time, but <laughs> certainly not. for similar, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but for similar system level sort of challenges that we may face. Yeah, well, it's, as a recipient myself, it was, it was heartbreaking to kind of hear and read that living donor transplant surgeries were, co were considered not urgent or not life-saving, knowing firsthand the impact that they have. But true to form at UHN and the amazing leadership that you guys have, you're back on track. And it really is a testament not only of the caliber of your team, but of the global leadership and the, you know where you're really setting the stage. And I'm always in awe of the entire transplant program at UHN and beyond. Yeah, and that's a great point, uh, Joanne, around leadership. I think uh, during the pandemic, you know, and any crisis really, uh, where uh, leadership or, or, or strong, compassionate, uh, you know, trusted and principled leadership shines through as a way to sort of uh, navigate a very uncertain sort of period of time and to do so successfully. You just have to look south of the border to realize what poor leadership gets you. So. Uh, I think uh, numerous examples of outstanding leadership uh, locally, as well as provincially and nationally. And I must say, uh, lots of great work that's being done in other living donor programs, specific kidney transplant programs, simply because there's many of them. Uh, our colleagues in Ottawa, London Health Science Center, St. Joe's in Hamilton, 
King, uh, Kingston General Hospital, of course, our, our very own colleagues at St. Michael's Hospital down, down the road. Uh, outstanding work that they're doing to continue to support the living donation as well as the transplant enterprise as a whole. And I think also I, I really, I would be remiss not to acknowledge my colleagues across the country. So um, we're going to uh, hear a little bit about the kidney care donation program a little bit more. And of course, something that uh, uh, Joanne, you're very familiar with you and Brendan. Sure. And I think it's been a true, uh, a true a revelation for us in terms of how we've been able to now transplant hundreds, if not thousands of patients who could not have otherwise received a transplant even maybe only a little over a decade ago. And the partnership across all these living donor programs uh, in the country to come together. Remember, this is not just the patients, the donors and the recipients and the teams immediately. It's also the labs that help match the kidneys or, uh, and the organs. It's a tremendous effort. And so kudos to, to everyone and, and, and my thanks, deep thanks to all my colleagues who are doing outstanding work across the country. Um, so uh, in that vein, I think um, we have another, we have a message and a subsequent video from a number of leaders in our system from uh, both within transplant and abroad want to sort of share a message with us. So let's go to that video now. Greetings. I'm Dr. Morgan, founder of the Black Health Alliance. I'd like to thank you as someone who has donated a kidney or part of their liver. You have made an incredible courageous, selfless, and precious gift to someone that has directly impacted the quality of their life and the duration of their life. Right now, in this province, there are hundreds of people and across this nation, thousands that are waiting for a kidney or liver transplant. Living organ donation is a gold standard and is the best way to save and improve the quality of life of these people. Thank you. Thank you to the doctors and physicians and nurses and the support team that make this possible at Toronto General Hospital. And for your family members and all those that are support you in this, in this big decision. For those that are, haven't really considered living organ donation seriously, get the information, get the facts. You could save a life. On behalf of the Ontario government and to mark the occasion of Living Donation Week, I want to extend our deepest thanks to all of the living donors who are giving hope to patients and their families across our province, and to our living donor teams who make these donations possible. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. I just say to all living donors, thank you for your kindness and for your courage and for your generosity and for your caring and for your compassion, but also thank you to the medical teams at UHN and across Canada who make living organ donations possible. To all living organ donors, you have shown such bravery, such compassion, but you are too humble. Talk to others. Don't keep this incredible story to yourselves, for it is you. It is you and the many who have registered consent to give the gift of life who will influence others to do the same. My heartfelt gratitude to you all. Three and a half years ago, I donated my kidney to a stranger um, so Joe could get a kidney from another stranger. And that's called the Kidney Parrot Exchange Program. And it was really one of the most extraordinary experiences I think we've both been through. Absolutely. Um, and for me, you know, it was seeing Joe wake up the morning after the surgery uh, completely transformed. You know, somebody who I had seen struggle for years trying to deal with. Uh, decreasingly weak kidney function was suddenly a new person, full of fire, full of energy. And that was the greatest gift, you know, I could ever receive. So, you know, being a kidney donor is, is really, it's about receiving a gift that is very, very special. Um, seeing somebody you love uh, completely transformed and be given an entirely new lease on life. How do you say thank you for the gift of life? I don't know. But what we do know is we can help ensure that more people across Ontario and across Canada have access to this amazing life-saving treatment. So big thank you to all the living donor heroes out there and to the transplant teams, to the team at UHN's transplant program. Thank you. Every day you're giving life to people and take it from me, there's nothing better than that. The Kidney Pair Donation Program matches transplant candidates with suitable living donors. It gives people the chance to become a living kidney donor, ensuring someone they want to help receives the needed kidney, even if they are not a match. Each living kidney donor can help up to at least two kidney patients. 
and often up to five or six. On behalf of the entire KPD team, I would like to thank the over 700 living donors who so generously donated a kidney within the KPD program. We at Canadian Blood Services are honored to be able to do the work we do to serve you, the brave patients, the generous donors, and the family and friends who love and care for them. Thank you. My journey starts about 40 years ago. I was sitting watching TV with my dad and it was a medical drama that was dealing with organ donation and uh, how there was a lack of available organs for people who were facing life-threatening diseases. And it followed a family that had had a tragic loss of a child and their, their decision to uh, offer up that child's organs for donation so that other people could be helped. And the show followed the journey of those organs and the impact of them. And at the end of the show, my dad asked me if I understood what I had just watched. And in my eight-year-old mind, I, I said, well, those people lost something, but they were able to give back to other people. And my dad said, yeah, that's exactly what we just watched. And he hoped that if I ever had to make a decision like that, I would choose to help other people. I've never regretted my decision to become an organ donor. It's like Rod Mr. Rogers says, the world is full of helpers. I felt like I had received so much help in my life, it was time for me to give back and become a helper myself. And let's be honest, our world needs a lot of helpers right now. So take the time, register your wishes to become an organ donor, and hey, maybe even become a living donor, because you'll never regret it, and you get a really cool t-shirt. On August 26, 2019, uh, my sister was given a very special gift and uh, it's really a gift of life and, and quality of life and and that was she got a kidney from her friend Jane. For over 30 years I suffered with polycystic kidney disease and my health declined year after year after year. Since I've received this donation of a kidney, my life has changed. The future of our family has changed. After watching for years as Janet's energy and health steadily decreased, I was amazed post-operation at how both her energy and health improved on a steady daily basis. I have my wife back. Thank you, Jane and all living donors. You are saving lives and providing a better quality of life for those in need. Jane, I thank you. I thank your darling husband, Phil, your amazing children, your family, your friends, and everybody that supported you through this process. Actions speak louder than words. Thank you, Jane, for speaking loudest of all in saving our baby sister. Living donors like Jane are saving lives and providing a better quality of life. Thank you to all those living donors. You guys are true heroes. For anyone who is even considering, think, even thinking about donating any type of organ or tissue, don't stop on that thought. Move forward, investigate, ask questions. There's many resources out there to help you determine if this is something right for you. The gift of an organ is the most profound, heartfelt gift anybody could ever receive. It saved my life. And you know what? We were blessed to have Jane come in and, and, and save my sister. But there are other Janes out there that are full of compassions. Janes and Bills and Bobs and Lauras that all step up and, and, and give an organ, give a kidney and save someone's life. And I can't thank you enough to all the donors. Bless your hearts. Jane, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Here I go again. I love you, sweetie. Thank you. I want to use this opportunity to recognize the life-saving efforts undertaken by the team at the Soham and Shayla Ajmira Family Transplant Center, the largest adult transplant program in North America with the largest living donor program 
here in Canada. The Centre's success is a direct result of its frontline staff, clinicians, researchers, students, and financial supporters. Thanks to all of you for your tremendous contributions. Special thanks to our live donor teams for their dedication and to our living donors for their life-giving generosity. And of course, thank you to the many, many patients and families who have put their trust in our teams. We do not take it for granted. This is an opportunity for education and celebration, but it's also a chance for us to say thank you. So thank you to all of our living organ donors for their incredible act of generosity. Thank you to the thousands of patients and their families who put their trust in us. Thank you also to our hardworking teams who work tirelessly every day to provide exceptional care for our patients. And thank you to all of you for joining us to learn more about living organ donation. I would like to thank personally the donor for their generosity, the patient and their family for trusting their care with us, and the dedicated member of the, our team for all their hard work. In the last year, we've performed over 700 transplants at UHN, and that's a world record-breaking number. Living donor organ transplants accounted for nearly 20% of our life-saving treatments. Here at UHN, it's our privilege to serve Canadians as the country's largest transplant program. None of our work would be possible without you, our living organ donors, and the amazing staff who make up Team UHN in transplantation. It is indeed our privilege to help deliver a healthier world in partnership with each of you. Thank you. As a patient, uh, as a family member, part of Team UHN and one of our incredibly generous living donors, you're really part of this story. Thank you for being part of this community and a special thanks uh, to the Center for Living Donation team for organizing this online event and making it possible even during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, for us to have uh, important conversations uh, around living donation. Thank you to our living donors who expressed this amazing generosity and compassion Thank you to our families and patients to, to put the trust in us to take care of them. Thank you for our amazing staff who uh, performs a great job every single day for our patients. I'd like to thank all of our donors, our patients, our staff, as well as those who are presenting and sharing their learnings with each other. It's going to be a wonderful week and happy and excited to share it with you. Thanks everyone. At UHN, we have one of the largest and best transplant centers in North America. We are especially proud of our living donor transplant program. To date, we have performed more than 2,400 living donor transplant surgeries. I want to give a special thank you to our amazing team that makes this possible. The nurses, physicians, surgeons, social workers, and many, many others who are part of a very dedicated team I also want to thank our living donors. You are very special people and your generosity is remarkable. As a surgeon at UHN, I have the opportunity to see miracles every day in the operating room. But the miracle of transplantation is extraordinary. Thank you to our physicians, our nurses, our coordinators, and most importantly, our living donors for their amazing contribution. Living donation for me is a whole community experience. When someone in your peer circle or in your family gets sick, um, you want to do something. You want to help out. You want to support in any way, shape, or form with what you have. In my situation, my sister bravely stepped up to the plate to give me a second chance at life. This act of sacrificial love allows me today to spend time with my friends and my family and I worry less about my health overall. We must recognize our living donors. This is a selfless act and it needs to be honored. Dear patients, right now I know this journey is extremely difficult. There's a lot of questions that are running through your mind and I even know sometimes that you may lose all hope. But let me ask you this. When the rain comes, does it last forever? It doesn't. Keep hope alive. Keep focusing on things that are positive 
hold on to the love and the support that you have around you and you will make it through. And dear um, transplant team, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being so patient and sharing your expertise and your knowledge um, with the community at large to really carry patients like me through um, a, a journey of healing. I am better for it today. Overall, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. That was another fantastic performance by the marginal donors. And I have to say the lyrics in the, the song, No Such Things, remind me of Brendan again. Um, he often tells me he doesn't like the fact that people refer to him as a hero because he donated his, his kidney. And I've heard that from many living donors that we, I want to call them heroes. I want to show my gratitude, but they don't, they don't like the title. They don't love the halo effect. That being said, 
Brendan absolutely thinks he's invisible. And I think the donor <laughs> surgery and subsequent very quick recovery um, where he was back to work in a couple of weeks proved to him that he might be actually invisible. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very that's, appropriate. That's and you know what, actually, um, it's really important that, uh, I mean, as you mentioned, we go through a very rigorous process to select individuals who are then candidates to donate. And so these are really very healthy individuals who have taken good care of themselves. And really, it's very important that they continue to do so afterwards. And a big part of their care uh, should also involves the team that uh, was, were involved in advance of their uh, donation as well. And so I want to just put a, uh, send a shout out to our living donation team overall. And, and remember, they continue to monitor donors even after, long after the donor a donation. So uh, kudos to uh, medical directors, Dr. Sunita Singh and Nazia Selzner, uh, both respect to medical directors of the kidney and liver transplant program, so living donation program. So thank you for them, to them. Also, just on, on the line of thank yous, it's just reminded me that, that it's really important for us to also acknowledge the generosity of our founding supporters for the Center for Living Organ Donation, and, uh, including Estellas Pharma Canada, as well as other industry partners. I think it's really important that, um, you know, there's always been this notion that we have to be careful about our relationships, to be frank, right, uh, in terms of how we sort of, but actually, I think, and I think it's changed now that we realize that actually industry are truly partners in, in, in sort of improving health and, and creating innovations. And I think thinking that we are separate or in parallel healthcare systems and industry partners has actually not served patients as well. And so I think more and more we've come to understand that's really about how we manage that. And actually Estellas Pharma Canada, uh, as well as other partners have been fantastic and really, really supported uh, the initiatives that we're trying to undertake to help patients and improve lives. And so thank you. Uh, from the bottom of our heart for that. Also, uh, some very, uh, some amazing donors who have sort of chosen the UHN transplant program as sort of their uh, target for donation, in particular the Jumeirah family, which now the transplant center, who the transplant center is named after. And uh, they provided the single largest donation to any multi-organ program uh, that's, uh, that, that's known at this point, a very large donation, a large gift, a transformative gift actually. And really with, with the goal of trying to improve, again, uh, the lives of the transplant patients, including, of course, uh, recipients and living donors. So thank you to them. And then finally, of course, to the work of our foundation. So the Toronto General Hospital and Toronto Western Hospital, outstanding people to work with, really help us continue to uh, create the fuel and the engine to, to, to drive the, the great work that's being done here at UHN. So thanks to them as well. And along that same vein of thank yous, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you, Dr. Kim, and all of your colleagues at the UHN Transplant Program, and in fact, across Canada, who you, we can all agree, you and your colleagues are the heroes, and you save lives every day, and so thank you. It, many of us are listening today, and many of us are here today because of the amazing work that you do. And that's something that um, I hope you're proud of, and I know I'm proud to be, as I always say, the cheerleader of the program, um, in my in my you know in my spare time, Thank so <laughs> with that we're coming to the end of the Joe and Joe formalities. Um, but we do have a few more videos and songs from the marginal donors and um, some thank you videos. But our work here is done. But before we sign off, I, we want to remind you that there's a lot there's many more great sessions to come throughout the rest of the week, and uh, we encourage you to have a look at livingorgandonation.ca to participate and um, don't forget to use the hashtag. LivingTX20. And please do join because this week is ultimately about all of you. It's about the panelists, the participants, and the people from home and work submitting their questions and comments. Thank you. We really appreciate you engaging in the discussion and advancing living organ donation because I am very confident that every story we tell and every perspective we share, whether it's the physician perspective, the patient perspective, the loved one, the caregiver, they're all going to transform someone's life they're going to help more people get access to this truly amazing program. So thanks everyone, take care and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Bye everyone. Bye. My cousin Janine was looking for a kidney and I had posted uh, her GoFundMe page on my Facebook page and lo and behold, someone that I knew uh, responded to it quite immediately just something very quickly stirred inside my spirit and inside of me and I knew that I was going to be the one that was going to donate my kidney to this complete stranger who I had never met that was the best day of our life I think we won the lottery that day when I get the news she really just wanted to live long enough to see her daughter graduate from high school 
and that just, you know, really struck a chord with me, and um, I didn't hesitate. Christy is, is part of my family now, by donating her kidney to my, giving my child a second chance in life. Now, if you have to go through that process, I tell anybody going through that process, don't give up. I received my kidney donation on March 27th, 2018. Um, it was a very long process and I just thought I had to come forward and say thank you to the many people that helped me and that was with me during my entire process. Thank you. Thank you so much. Words cannot express how I feel and how my family feels. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Christy Nolan for donating her kidney to Janine. I'd like to thank Dr. Lee and the staff at Toronto General Hospital. Living donations keep families together and gives a person a second chance at life. And now Janine um, is healthy and strong. She's taking care of her family. She's loving her daughter and she is an extension to life. I'd like to thank God for protecting us and guiding us through our tough times. I'd like to thank my Nana for having her epiphany to help save my, my mother's life. I'd like to thank Christy for, for donating her kidney. I'd like to thank my Auntie Maggie for posting her Facebook post. I'd like to thank Dr. Lee who performed the surgery and all the nurses and doctors who took care of her when I wasn't there. I'd like to thank my mom for protecting me and guiding me and keeping me happy through tough times. Thank you. A living organ donation is extremely important. My family is complete because someone, Christy Nolan, took the time to give. She wasn't scared, she, wasn't, she didn't waver on this thought of giving an organ, giving me her kidney. And because of this, my family is whole again. I am whole, my family is whole again. I'm just very honored and humbled to be able to um, be a part of her journey and her story. Living donors, you truly are modern day heroes. And I also want to thank the donor teams at the Toronto General Hospital. None of this can happen without you. Thank you so much. If you are thinking about being a living donor, please do not hesitate to do so. Uh, go to the right websites and find out more and you can change a life forever. Thank you. Hi everybody, it's me Priyanka from Canada's Drag Race and I'm here to talk to you about living organ donations. Listen, I gotta tell you something, it's very important because listen, listen, are you listening? <laughs> Sharing is caring and that's why it's important to, you know, give a little piece of yourself to other people to help them live a longer and healthier life. I wanna thank everybody who is a living donator and to those who work on the teams that help with all of the transplants. I love you all, bye. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all the living donors and to the transplant teams that are made up of doctors and nurses. I've met a young man by the name of Brock Chessel. He was a recipient of a liver. And also my neighbor, Janet, she received a kidney from one of her friends. And they've both gone on to use that to not only just have the second chance at life, but to really sort of have a passion and zest for life. They've spoken about their stories and inspired so many other people. So I guess I just want you to know that in this gift that you have given them, there's so much more to that. It's the gift that keeps on giving. It has a ripple effect and inspires so many people. So a very, very big thank you to all of you. I just wanted to take a minute to give my sincere respect, admiration, and gratitude to all of the living organ donors and the health teams that are making this amazing work possible. It's not only life-saving, for a patient and recipient. It's life changing for them and for their families and their communities. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and from all of us who stand in admiration of the wonderful things that you're doing every day. Living Donation Week is especially important for me and my family as both my brother and brother-in-law receive kidney transplants from members of our family. I'd like to send a special thank you to all the living donors out there and the medical teams which made these miracles possible and saved their lives. Thank you. We all have it within ourselves to give someone not just a second chance at life, but a better life, free from the restrictions of chronic illness and pain. I cannot think of a better gift or a more heroic act of generosity. To all the living donors, 
and to the transplant teams at Toronto General Hospital, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I just wanted to make a quick video to thank everybody who is involved in living organ donation. That goes for the doctors, the nurses, the caretakers, the amazing selfless people who give uh, a part of their body to somebody else. I think it's amazing. And I think it's such an important thing because uh, living organ donation truly gives people a second chance at life and it keeps families together. So I really truly cannot think of a more selfless act that you can do for another human being than literally giving a complete stranger a part of your body. So bravo. Um, my hat's off to all of you. I love you. In December 2015, I donated my left kidney to my husband, Scott, who has lived his entire life with polycystic kidney disease. Donating my kidney was not a difficult decision for me. When we see someone suffering, we often say, I wish there was something that we could do. And for those waiting on the transplant list, there is something we can do. We can donate a kidney or part of a liver. It truly is the gift of life. I'd like to thank all the doctors, nurses, coordinators, technicians, and everyone at the Toronto General Hospital who helped us through our transplant journey. If you or someone you know would like more information about organ donation, please contact the Centre for Living Organ Donation at UHN.
Won't you come on over? 